Good evening. <laughs> Why did you decide to make a new version of Sherlock? Uh, well, Steve Moffat and I, who have been friends for a long time, we fell to talking about Sherlock Holmes and how much we loved it. Um, and what, what became clear very, very quickly was that our favourite versions, amongst all the myriad brilliant ones over the years, uh, were the Basil Rathbone, Nigel Bruce films, particularly the ones which they updated to the then current setting of the Second World War. And it's, it, you have to whisper it because it sounds like heresy, but there's something about those films, the fact that they're made, they're B-movies, they're made very quickly, but they capture, I think, an essence of the original stories, uh, often much more successfully than a lot more stately period versions. We just thought, wouldn't it be brilliant to do it now, the present day, and what, by doing that, what, what you gain is you can, you can focus the attention back onto the characters of Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson, Mrs. Hudson, Inspector Lestrade, but particularly Holmes and Watson, and as it were, blow away the fog of the trappings, which t to my mind, to Steve's mind, really have become, it's, it's become about that. It's become about the, the fetishization of Victoriana more than the, the, the brilliant friendship between these two wonderful characters. I think it's worth saying, first of all, this series is credited as being created by Steve and myself. Obviously, it's Arthur Conan Doyle's genius which is behind it. And that's why Sherlock Holmes is so popular, because the man who created it in a completely blasé way um, was a genius, a brilliant, brilliant writer who captured something sort of you know, magical and then didn't know what he'd got. I mean, one of the eternal mysteries of Sherlock Holmes, of course, is how disparaging his creator was about him. Conan Doyle could never understand why people didn't think his historical romances were more important. I mean, they're wonderful books, they are. Just nobody reads them now. And it's one of those things, he caught some, he, he bottled lightning. There's something about Holmes and Watson just caught the public imagination very quickly and then ran with it. All I can say is, if it sounds like heresy, uh, there's absolutely no reason to treat it like that. Uh, if it's not your cup of tea, trust me, there will be another Sherlock Holmes by this time tomorrow. <laughs> because he's the most film character in all fiction. And I, I, all, I, all I say, from the bottom of my heart, is that there's no need for anyone to, to react violently against it. If you don't like it, then it's just our version. We happen to think it's good, uh, and we're very proud of it, but really, Nobody's trying to, to uh, you know, rain on anyone's parade. And just because we've taken away the handsome cabs and frock coats in the period setting, you know, there'll, there'll be a sequel to the Robert Downey Jr. one the year after next, uh, and then another version probably after that. So um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to damn it with fake praise because we're immensely proud of it, but I, I hope people don't sort of react you know, violently just for the sake of reacting. There are a lot of references. They will. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of references to the story, to the original stories. Was it fun for you to find ways to update those? Absolutely. I mean, it was key to us from the beginning to try and show people that it was being made by people who love Sherlock Holmes. There's nothing casual about it. Steve and I put an awful lot of work into devising the new world of Sherlock, and there's lots of traps. There's lots of things to decide. Is there a drug habit? can't smoke a pipe, he's 34 or whatever, you know. They can't call themselves Holmes and Watson. Who does that? They share a flat. It's actually more common now than it was in the late 19th century. Is Mrs. Hudson their landlady or their housekeeper? Inspector Lestrade, a very interesting point. He was Inspector Lestrade up until we were actually shooting and I suddenly sat up in bed and thought, he'd be called D.I. Lestrade. Of course he would. And it's amazing how these things nearly slip past you. What did you think of Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock? It's dreadful. He's perhaps, <laughs> well, I, I have said it before already, but, but um, there are, there's a funny thing sometimes happens where, where like a new James Bond is being cast and you, everyone can have like half a dozen, oh, he'd be good, oh, what about him? And then sometimes there's sort of one person. It sort of happened when Pierce Brosnan did it, I think. He, he'd nearly done it and then it, wasn't, it didn't work out, it wasn't the right time. When it, when it came his time, he was the man. And funnily enough, Benedict was the only person we saw or considered. Um, it just fell into place. Then we had to find uh, John Watson to, to fit him, which was a longer process. But it just happens sometimes. And, and part of our brief to ourselves was obviously not 
to choke the baby out with the bathwater. There are certain things which are immutable. One of them is how Holmes sort of looks. And over the years, there have been round-faced Holmeses and, and certainly fleshier Holmeses. And there's something about the dark hair, the sort of hawk-like face, the cheekbones, that just, you can't not do it. Otherwise, you might as well just do something else entirely, I think. So Benedict was our first and only choice, and he's fantastic. And would you like to do more in the future? Of course we would, yes. We'd be delighted. I mean, we've done three 90-minute films. We've done essentially like a mini-series. Uh, there's something about that format that demands a scale. Uh, but we have, yeah, we have plans. If, if people want us to, we'd be absolutely delighted to do it.